We're here in the Geekscape booth at WonderCon with John Schnepp, What's who is up? finishing up The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, the documentary that you guys all kickstarted, and now are like, hey, where's my movie? Right, where is that movie? So ah. I'm, I'm now kickstarting The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, What Happened? Hey, you know what happened? We're still shooting it. Amazingly, we just came back from England. We interviewed Tim Burton. We're interviewing a bunch more people. It's just like, it's just the tip of the iceberg, literally and figuratively. We've got so much more that we've been shooting. It's fantastic. So since John is our resident Superman expert, I wanted to ask John, what were his top five Superman stories of all time? Like if somebody was going to go into the comic book store and be like, I want the top five Superman stories now, what would you recommend them? All right, what I would recommend, and like I don't have a, a, a top five, like countdown five, four, three, two, one, but these are my top five Supermans in no specific order. Here are the top five Superman stories as told to you by John Schnepp. Man of Steel, John Byrne, reinvents Superman in the 80s. A lot of everything that he reinvented are still part of the Superman that we know now. He uh, depowered Superman a little bit. He made Lex Luthor a businessman instead of like a crazy scientist. Did a lot of change ups and I, to me it was like a really fun run. John Byrne's Man of Steel. And then he did uh, he did a one through I think 19. He did about 19 individual issues. Maybe it was 20, 21, I can't remember right now. And he actually, his last issue was Superman as an executioner of the Phantom Zone. He killed everybody. He killed Zod and the other two humpies. Face it, Superman fans. Superman kills, and he'll do it again. And who doesn't love John Byrne's Superman art? It's like it kind of it's got that love and throwback flavor of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, with that new flavor that like everybody from Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, Bagley, everybody's always like, you just see the influence of John Byrne through every new artist. All-Star Superman, Morrison and Quietly, giving us like an incredible all-star spanning of all the stories from the beginning of Superman all the way to now. I especially love the very bizarre, weird space age Superman with the creatures and the monsters. Incredible, great story. And to me, I really liked it because Morrison was able to take all the weird elements of Superman that a lot of people maybe aren't that familiar with. Like in the 50s, I don't know if you've ever read a lot of the 50s Batman and Supermans, they're constantly going to bizarre planets. And Superman keeps like a zoo of like yeah, aliens. we just like weird, yeah. weird and stuff. And that's in there. Yeah. They, they, he, he was able to touch on all these different elements of what makes Superman so much fun. And uh, also Superman may have my favorite Lex Luthor moment too, when he is at the very beginning, his final meal before he gets the uh, electric chair mm. is one of my favorite Lex Luthor moments. And that's not a spoiler, you have to read it. It's in the first issue. For the man who has everything, annual number 11 of Superman, which is an Alan Moore story that is one of my all-time favorite stories. It has Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman with Robin mm -hmm. and Mongol as yeah. the villain who brings this crazy, weird alien chest burster type thing. That little thing. parasite. Yeah, like, whatever your, your heart's wish is, it makes it real. And you just go into a coma, and so for Clark... He went. He was living on Krypton as Kal El, and Krypton never blew up, and all those things that he remembers happening. So, but while while in real time, Wonder Woman is getting her ass beat by Mongol. Batman's already just you know off trying to you know figure it out. Robin gets those weird gloves. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a fantastic. And Dave Gibbons' art, Superman, that one panel, burn. Come on, yeah. some fantastic, amazing art by Dave Gibbons. Incredible story. Whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow? There was an Action Comics 583 and Superman 423. Another one written by Alan Moore. He just seemed to be able to nail the character and in a loving tribute to like all of the old Supermans, mm -hmm. but with a, a, the Alan Moore spin, so to speak. And some of those old uh, artists cameo on the cover. Yes, Kurt you know, Swan, Boring. Planet, yeah. yeah, like you had the, I think the first issue was inked by George Perez or it was the second issue. But it's a great story, and it also kind of wraps up Superman, you know, in a, in a really great way and gives you, like, everything that you'd ever n need to know about all the characters that Superman ever interacted with, and then also a fresh start. So, finally, Kingdom Come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross. An incredible story, incredible Alex Ross artwork, reinterpretation of all the characters in the future, and we've seen ramifications across all the comic books, even up in the 52, trying to work Kingdom Come to make Kingdom Come maybe even become a reality. One of the most fantastic stories, you know, lifted a little bit from, you know, everybody's favorite uh, story, the Bible. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got a lot of uh, other flavor in there. You got the, uh, an incredible reinterpretation of Shazam and how he fights Superman at the end is just one of the most amazing things. And just the story of Superman, just an older Superman, somebody who's been on the farm, 
taking care of business and kind of like semi-retired. Just another type of a thing that, that like Frank Miller brought up. Wade and uh, Ross reinterpreted that like superheroes retired. Now they're brought back in. You know, Superman, I think he killed the Joker in the Kingdom Come. Which he would totally do. Like, yeah. Gotham's a mess. Superman yeah. cleaned it up in five minutes from orbit. Yeah. Who doesn't love that Superman from Kingdom Come? Those are my top five Superman stories. Magog! Magog! The Dark Knight Returns. That's a, I know it was a Batman story, but to me, that was a really cool reinterpretation of Superman as like a, a government hump. And it was like, it kind of made you not only hate him, but love him at the same time. Like Batman hated Superman so much because he was like, you're the one who like let it all happen, Clark. You're the one who, you know, let the government tell us that we can't be superheroes anymore. You do what they say. And, and to a certain degree, you see why Superman did what he did. And so you're sort of on his side and you're against him at the same time, just like Batman. So The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller, Claus Jansen, and Lynn Varley, issues one through four, one of the coolest and weirdest reinterpretations of Superman as the government's pawn. Batman hates and loves him. We hate and love him. Show him the poster. Show him the poster. Check out this poster. I'm selling this. Thanks to Jonathan London for letting me uh, hawk it here at Geekscape to raise some more money for the finishing funds of Superman Lives. Uh, you're going to be able to buy this online at uh, schnepzone.com slash the death of Superman lives what happened and you'll see some of these items available to purchase to help with the finishing funds for the documentary. Last thing is that we're probably going to be doing like a last finishing funds fundraiser on Indiegogo to like try to do these five sequences, these recreation scenes. We didn't raise the money on the original Kickstarter so we're going another route and whatever if we raise each of these levels we're going to make them so that'll be available in the next couple weeks. Just like so. Superman he's not giving up. I'm not so you may up. be asking where this movie is. It's coming. He's not giving up. It's coming to you. Schnepp Zone. Check it out. Geekscape. Poof. So thank you guys for watching our video that we shot right here at WonderCon. We're going to be at San Diego Comic-Con this summer at the Geekscape booth. And of course, subscribe to Geekscape TV because we'll have friends like John popping in and out. Yeah. Well, you don't even know when they're going to be doing it. The only way to know is to subscribe, right? Click that subscribe button, son. Subscribe. <laughs> and leave a comment and like the video. Share it with your Hero friends. Hero of the prophecy! <laughs> oh yeah, watch that video too. Facts flying away. <laughs> Where's Doug Jones? <laughs>